Pretty fired up group for being up at Governor. How you doing? <laughs> what a fired up group for being up this early in the morning after being up past our bedtime last night. But the energy is extraordinary in the Democratic Party, and I especially feel that when I'm with my fellow Midwestern Democrats. As you know, I, uh, I grew up just across the state line from Michigan, but then I married into the state of Michigan, and it has been a very, very good thing. <laughs> Fell in love with a school teacher from Traverse City. It's right over there. And have been so thankful for how Michigan has embraced me and how we have been able to raise our family, a family I was proud to say a little bit about tonight, uh, last night at the Democratic Convention uh, and to the country, because it's really in the name of that family that we are working so hard to make sure that we elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, the next president and vice president of the United States of America. And Michigan is the center of the political universe, so we know we're going to deliver. We're going to win for so many reasons, but one of the most important is the fact that it turns out Americans already agree with us on the issues that matter most. And we can't forget that, because especially for those of us who live in more conservative or rural or swing areas, sometimes we Democrats fool ourselves into thinking that we don't have the most popular positions. The reverse is true. Most Americans already agree with us that it is the wealthy who are not paying their fair share in the middle class that needs a break, not the other way around. Most Americans agree with us that the best way to protect the next generation isn't to keep a Tony Morrison paperback out of the school library, it's to make sure that guns don't get anywhere near our schools and our neighborhoods. And Randy Weingarten and me supporting our public school teachers, most Americans agree with us on that right now. Most Americans already understand that Democrats are offering the best positions. It's why the biggest scandal of the year, the one that actually sent Republicans scrambling, the most dangerous thing to hit the Trump campaign all year, wasn't a criminal cover-up, although that happened too. It wasn't a sex scandal, although they've had more than their fair share of that. The most debilitating scandal to face the Republican Party this year is the publication of their own policies and plans in a document called Project 2025 that they put forward. They didn't even realize how wildly unpopular it was with the American people until they wrote it down and they've been disavowing it ever since. I just saw Donald Trump on my uh, so semi-favorite news network this morning, we won't say which one, try to say he had nothing to do with it. Americans already agree with us on policies. But never mind the policies, let's talk about results. I saw Donald Trump go to Michigan, of all places, to give a speech on crime as if we were going to forget that he, he's a convicted criminal running against a prosecutor. And he seems to want us to forget that crime was actually higher when he was president. Why would we want to go back to the higher crime of the Donald Trump years? Let's talk about the economy. You know, some of our more conservative friends, I think of the economy as whether everybody can do well, whether working people are getting a fair day's wage for a good day's work. But we do have some friends who think the economy is pretty much just the same thing as the stock market. Fine. Let's use their way of thinking about the economy. The Dow Jones and the S&P are doing better today than they were under Donald Trump. Why would we want to go back? And one more thing, if you want to talk about results, a whole thing called infrastructure. The last president talked a good game about infrastructure and didn't do a thing. The Biden-Harris administration has delivered the infrastructure plan of a generation, and as President Biden said, it's not infrastructure week in Washington anymore, it's an infrastructure decade, creating so many good-paying jobs in Michigan communities. Let's talk about manufacturing, a manufacturing recession under Donald Trump, even before COVID, whereas now we have the most investment in
in building and operating factories, creating good paying jobs from the building trades to the manufacturing trades. The most investment we have had since John F. Kennedy was president. So yeah, let's talk about results. And let's just think about what it feels like to be an American. Did you feel the sense of hope and joy and energy in that convention hall? And wouldn't you rather live with four years of that than have those guys in your living room for four more years? We have the winning message, we have the winning results, and we definitely have the winning candidates. Kamala Harris, who I have personally seen up close in one of the most demanding and important jobs in the world, shaping one of the most successful administrations in American history. And let's talk about Tim Walz for a minute. Michigan knows a thing or two about what it's like to have a great Midwestern governor in our friend Gretchen Whitmer. You're about to hear from another great Midwestern governor in J.B. Pritzker. Tim Walls is a, an example of a great Midwestern governor. I have seen campaigns spend millions of dollars trying to make their candidate seem like the kind of guy who would be a National Guardsman, a football coach, and a school teacher. Tim Walls literally is that guy. And his career has been about serving others. That's what being a command sergeant major is. That's what being a teacher is. That's what being a coach is. And if you understand it the right way, that's what being president and vice president are all about. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance do not understand what it means to live for others. Kamala Harris and Tim Walz do. But you Michigan Democrats also know never to treat the presidency like the only office that matters. You're going to be out there working for Democrats up and down the ticket, making sure that Alyssa Sarkin is the next senator from, from Michigan in the United States, making sure we build our House majority, making sure we elect great mayors. Good morning, Mayor. Making sure that we have the state legislature that can continue to deliver the historic wins for working people, for families, for democracy, for freedom that you are in the state of Michigan. I am so proud of my adopted home state of Michigan and so optimistic about our future. Are we ready to deliver a better future for our state, for our country, for each other, and for our families? I can't wait. Let me finish at this early hour by sharing what it's like most days at an even earlier hour when Chaston and I wake up in our bed in Traverse City. As you know, in the wintertime, or the summertime up north, there's long days. The sun is up late and the sun is up early. About an hour before that is when our son, our son comes up, that is to say our son Gus barreling into the bedroom with a teddy bear in one hand and a book in the other demanding we read to him, ready to run downstairs and get the tambourine if we don't. Two or three hours before that is when we see our daughter, Penelope, who will come into our bedroom and let us know sometimes that she was propelled there by a bad dream. Sometimes she tells us she had a dream about dinosaurs chasing her, which is a very understandable fear if you're two or three. And we put our arms around her and tell her, we're going to keep you safe. No dinosaur is going to get you on our watch. And we go back to sleep. And it's a good feeling as a parent. It's an especially good feeling as a parent to make a promise to your child that you know you can keep without even having to make any effort, because no dinosaurs are going to come into her bedroom, whether or not we do anything. But those aren't the promises that we're going to have to work on. The other promises we got to make to our children are promises like making sure they grow up and thrive in a climate that is as ready to support their prosperity as the climate we inherited. A promise I want to make to our daughter is that she is going to have more and not less rights and freedoms than her parents, than her grandmother. We want to promise our kids that they will inherit a better democracy than we did, and that doesn't happen on its own. That happens through hard work. It happens through knocking on doors. It happens through organizing. It happens through voting. It happens through what you are doing at this convention. And again, Michigan will decide which road America takes. So are you ready to make sure America goes the right way in November? Are you ready to say yes to the leaders who are building bridges and no to the leaders who are banning books? I know that we are going to win, and we're going to have a lot to celebrate come November. I can't wait to get there with you. Thank you for everything you're doing, Michigan Democrats. Let's go out there and win this thing. Thank you.